Good morning. Let's do it. Let's do it. Alrighty, here we are. We have arrived at episode eight of our final export. Um, I'm your dirty host. My name is uh, Freud, Freud Art. Um, we've got four artists with us, just like every week um, here today. Um, we got one one from over on AVAX and the other three here we uh, we have on Phantom. Um, we've got uh, Absolute and um, uh, Vanguard. Abso and Vanguard, they're from the Portal Heads team. They work as a team, as a team of artists. Um, they've created the, the Portal Heads that we know and love. Um, we have uh, Tomb Heads, um, the creator of uh, probably the, one of the more iconic um, PvP projects um, on Phantom. Um, we have one Earth NFT from over on AVAX, um, working with CryptoCure and uh, the One Earth NFT project and Footprints on Mars. Um, so, yeah, basically the way the format works for everyone listening for the first time is um, we're going to go through each project once at a time. Um, I've got some specific questions that I've kind of extract, extracted out of the information they've given me. Um, we'll have a good chat about each project and do a kind of int- introduction and then I'm going to throw a bunch of questions and topics up to the floor and we can all discuss them as artists together here. Um, and then that's basically the format of the episode. Um, so once again, thanks everybody, uh, all the artists for being here today, um, this morning, tonight, whatever it may be. Um, your time is invaluable and your insight is even, uh, is even more so. So, uh, thanks heaps. Um, we'll get cracking into it. So my first guest, um, I want to get up on the stage and talk is, um, our Portal Heads team. Um, so Abso and Vanguard, how are you? How's it going? Hey man, hey Freud, we're doing we're doing great, we're doing great. So so good. So I'm going to drop a I'm dropping a couple of links um, just to their Twitter and Discord. This is the Portal Heads crew. Um, so interestingly, this uh, this 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 art's d- designed and and all the art and the visual material comes from a team of these two these two masterminds here, Abso and Vanguard. Very interestingly, they are they're similar in ways. They both come from a background of graphic design which uh, is this in line exactly with me as well, is where I come from. Um, Abso uses and loves Photoshop, while Vanguard um, prefers not to use it. it is never, he said he never was big into Photoshop, so I find that interesting. They both have a bit of a different kind of approach. I think they both work in After Effects, however. Um, uh, working with Premiere for Timeline. He also, Abso says he's, probably, he's got like a video editing background um, and loves kind of writing his stories in, in Google Docs. So I think he's just a multi-talented kind of creative, I can imagine. I'll stick with Abso for the moment. Um, he comes from the world of design, like I, say, like I said. He loves drawing and acrylic paint on rough paint paper is kind of a, an ongoing project he works with. Um, he describes his style or his genre as modern sub- subvers- sub- subversive um, modernism plus minimalism, um, that kind of thing. Design and typography is a very integral part to most of the stuff he works with. Um, so the things he work on is obviously the Portal Heads project. Um, there's a Portal Passengers, which is um, the next se- uh, Portal Passengers, which is a smaller kind of accompanying series to the, the Portal Heads. And the next season is coming up soon. There's a whole bunch of stuff. There's talks with an international museum about doing an NFT show. There's all sorts of stuff that these two. Um, I guess are doing as partnership and, and, and walking into. Um, I'll get to t- touch on Vanguard uh, a little bit. Uh, Vanguard is a graphic designer as well. He works in motion and graphics and uh, computer generation animation. Um, again, very similar. He describes his style as soft modern, um, which he says he's kind of coining the term. Um, it's that modern minimal look um, integrated with genre breaking kind of special effects treatment. Uh, works in After Effects and Cinema 4D. Um, and uh yeah he's uh is um his final he kind of does his illustrations in uh and throughout illustrator and then final outputs through after effects or cinema 4D um so that's ba- a basic introduction on both abso and vanguard um uh, my obvious question obviously to start and kick us off is tell us about portal heads tell us about how you guys linked up um tell it, tell us about how that relationship works and um yeah, kind of this, uh, how, I guess, yeah, how you guys work together as artists and how you, in particular you work together, found each other and, and created these portal head characters that we know and love. Awesome. Um, 
by the way, that was an amazing introduction. Uh, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's remarkable. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, no well, Vanguard, Vanguard and I uh, go back quite a bit. And, and that kind of explains, I think, some of the similarities in our journey so far. We met in design school. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> with, with, you know, we, we kind of chose slightly different paths uh, uh, during school, but we were always kind of like hanging out, uh, doing projects together, giving each other feedback uh, on, on things that we were doing. So while we kind of, while we kind of ended up with different specialties, uh, we always kept in touch and we were kind of creative kindred spirits, so to speak. Uh, and, well said, and, yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, by the time we decided to, you know, do the, do the portal heads project, like we, we already had our mindset on, you know, do it collaborating again together, working on something big, not just, you know, putting it off the next week, next week. And, uh, you know, as, as these things normally do, we kind of decided that we finally wanted to make something together and just like get our hands and minds really dirty. Uh, and that's how it all kind of started. Um, and as you know, Portal Heads is, is a, uh, is a 10,000, uh, 10,000 PFP project, uh, that, uh, along with Portal Passengers now it's, you know, we're, we kind of keep telling our story. Um, and the way Vanguard and I started, I mean, because one, we, we had that kind of previous experience of, of working together. We had that shorthand, like we understand each other's sensibility. Uh, like I, I know, I know what he likes, he knows what I like. So it was kind of like a, this fast tracked conversation of like what we, what we wanted to do. And, and over the f past few years, uh, Vanguard had a lot of like um, experience also designing uh, in the kind of like CG animation character design wor uh, world. Mm -hmm. And we were we were already um, like I I experimenting with some with some stuff uh, for some other projects, couple of commercial projects as well. And then uh, f finally, when we decided to start, it was kind of it was kind of natural. That's epic. Um, and so can you talk about like kind of more the relate, like who does what in like when we're, when we're preparing a, a portal head, what can you describe the actual nature of the, of the, of the, uh, of the partnership? Like, how does that, how does that work? How does the, how is the workload balance between the two? It's a lot of back and forth. Um, the, it doesn't Usually, even start, like it doesn't even start with a sketch, right? It starts with an idea first. So that's how like it's it, the back and forth starts just you know on Google <laughs> actually Google documents in a sense, right? Um, yeah, just yeah, you know, just the germ of the idea sort of like growing into uh, lines that turns into character. Yeah, for, but from a, like a generally from a process standpoint, um, I'll have I'll have some ideas jotted down and sketched out. Uh, I usually do a lot of writing in addition to the visual work that we do. It's kind of I don't know if it's a good habit or a bad habit, but it, but I have to kind of write this stuff that's in my head down. Okay. Otherwise, I either forget or it just kind of dissipates into air. So I do uh, quite a bit of writing, and then um, I'll 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 sketch some stuff, and I'll and I'll share it with mm -hmm. uh, share it with Vanguard and the rest of the team. Uh, you know, as 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 modern people, we are huge into like the full team being um, integrated into the creative process. So it's a lot of it's a lot of conversations between between the partners, um, and then Vanguard. Will also, he's he's usually a couple of steps ahead of us most of the time. Okay. So like he'll he'll have some 
you know, like uh, upgraded sketches or some builds on stuff that I've shared like a little bit ago. Uh, and then we'll kind of pass this stuff back and forth. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll mark up certain sketches and say, this is working, this is not working. Um, and then when, just when we land on a sketch that we really, really feel like communicates the thing that we want to make, that's when we get to actual sitting down and making the thing. Um, wow. And that pro that process also is a little, I mean, it, it can go it can go either way depending on the depending on what we're making. Mm -hmm. um, like I I tend to kind of do a bit more art direction and kind of post finishing on the work. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas like I can never match uh, like Vanguard's fluidity in like the, the kind of the first pass in, in uh, Illustrator and like getting the kind of main shapes on the computer. Like right. he'll, he'll do most of that. And right. then we as a team will we'll look at those first passes. Uh, I'll do some suggestions again, like, I'm kind of a Photoshop head, so I'll, I'll like mm -hmm. take that prototype and draw over it to get it to a certain place, and then I'll pass it off to Vanguard, and then he'll he'll like polish it to this kind of like uh, uh, finished finished product, and it's it's a lot mm. of back and forth like that. Yeah, it's um a question for me is like um you've got ten thousand right. And you say, in a way, from what it sounds like, you're kind of approaching each one kind of into individually. But once you've done that, uh, then the uh, the respective attributes, do you break them all up individually and they can be cross-shared and kind of cross-mismatched? cross, cross mismatched? Or are you guys setting out to create 10,000 of these individually kind of thing? Like, how does the attributes and the, cre the actual structure and creation of, or the generative side of this work? Well, it's interesting, actually, because... Uh... Like, you know, besides the iterative process, uh, since, you know, it's all the sketches, all the artwork starts from an idea, it's usually, you know, we based uh, our guys, you know, each portal, you know, have actually some master characters, so to speak. And, um, you know, that those characters are also what's driving the meta story and also what's sort of uh, contributing to the world building. But then, you know, we break up those uh, elements and um, uh, I actually, you know, prototype it in um, After Effects myself um, just to see what's working. And, uh, you know, what's very interesting is... Um, when you, for example, like, you know, you make those characters, right? But what with the image generation, there are like, you know, we, you know, such combinations came out from the engine that, you know, we were so surprised that, you know, we would never thought of putting it together, like, you know, by hand or like, you know, by eye. That's right. Yeah. So that, that part is to me fascinating. It really yeah, is. From, from, yeah. From, from that perspective, we, um, we definitely it's not a 10,000 individual pieces all hands you know hand drawn mm -hmm. we definitely like created a lot of a lot of traits way more than we needed we made sure those traits kind of m mapped back to some sort of storytelling element so you know down the line they don't get us in trouble or they don't because they don't feel kind of uh, tacked on or superfluous. Yep. Um, and and but then we really like we really let the image generation, the kind of programmatic image generation, be a part of the process because like that's ultimately what excites me about the space as, as an artist. Uh, one of the things that excites me about this space as an artist is like. Uh, you you come away with output that there's no way for you to have imagined. Uh, there is yeah. no like I I say this very openly. There's like no way you can yeah. think about you can think of some of the combinations that are available 
And then once you let the generation kind of like be in the process, like you're, you're continually surprised. And, and that's, mm. a, that's a part of the reason why we're so like yep. just excited about the project on an ongoing basis. Yeah. Epic. Um, I'm I'm totally there with you. I think it's um it's a really really exciting time, and I know that Foot Footprints on Mars also has a lot to say about this as well. Um, look, uh, I want to ask uh, about your transition into the space. So can you tell us all how you found the space, how you found your team, and um, um, yeah, I guess your position in the space now is it like is this, is this taking over your full time job? Is this what you do a hundred percent all the time? Um, and yeah, more importantly, how, how did you, what was your introduction into the NFT space and, and what, what was your journey to become or go from being an, uh, an artist to an NFT artist? Can you t- tell us all that story? Sure. Uh, well, it all started with, um, another modern person, uh, uh, Cytron kind of hitting me up and, you know, he's a, he's a, he's been a collector since early days. Um, you know, I remember, you know, he would, he would kind of hit, hit me up. We would have long conversations about just the space and what's going on. And, um, I didn't initially understand it as probably most of us, uh, have gone through in some, in some shape or form. Um, but once I, once I realized that this was of this could be a vehicle as an artist for storytelling on an ongoing basis, not just like make a pretty image, put it up and wait and hope for the best, but actually building platforms for storytelling was possible. Uh, mm-hmm. That's when I got really, really interested and, and started diving in. Uh, uh, full force as far as a <laughs> uh, full-time job it, it's certainly it's certainly a full-time job whether you have a side job uh, uh, or not um, we, yeah, we yeah, yeah. spend so much of our waking hours uh, uh, working on portal heads uh, that, that it feels like one uh, we still again we still have certain projects that we work on or keep alive uh, on the side and that feeds into what I think makes us strong as, as, as mm. artists. Uh, mm. but boy, it is, it's, it's a lot of hours for sure. And as you probably yeah, yeah. have experienced yeah, yeah, so. no, of course. And, um, and Vanguard, a lot of hours around the globe actually, yeah. which is even better. <laughs> well, um, like Apso said, we, uh, met in design school way back yeah. when. And, as a matter of fact, um, I guess we were into the space back then, before even the space existed. Um, when we were in school, um, he said that, you know, we, you know, sort of like, you know, focused on different areas. But one area that we both focused on was like, you know, how technology and design came together. And as a matter of fact, we were doing like generative projects and uh, like artistic and design projects mm. uh, even back at school. And then, you know, work happens and then we, you know, went off our separate ways. But those times were always something that we cherished. And when I personally saw like, you know, the NFT space sort of coming into what it is, which, you know, um, like a year feels like you know 10 years in the space obviously but um when we started talking um what we could do with you know when those like when the past and the present sort of like came together um we said why not let's you know go to the future <laughs> yeah fucking oath. <laughs> totally totally <laughs> Well, guys, thank you so much. That was um, that was epic. Um, it was, I think uh, everyone really appreciated seeing the um, the sketches, hearing the story, and um, yeah, and and, and I guess uh, hearing more insight about the teamwork and the way this these all all these things come together, and uh, how much how much thought and time has been put into it. So, thanks so much for all that in- insight, guys. That was brilliant. Uh, thank you. And just to, just in case I don't get to say this before, because we have a we have a big group here. 
yeah, please, um, before we go. disconnect, like um, we really appreciate you guys. Like, like you guys are doing such a good job um, kind of connecting the different kind of mindsets uh, from artists to collectors to like DeFi enthusiasts, like all of it. And um, really like you guys are so visible with like getting these getting these uh, 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 initiatives and, and making them happen. And this is obviously one of them. And uh, like kudos to you for for really sticking to it and, and uh, really honored to be here. Thank you. No worries at all, man. Thank you so much for being here. Like I keep saying on every episode, I do this mainly because of me. Like it's just a fascination. You know, I still find myself quite early in the space and it's um it's just a it's a great thing for me to be able to kind of pick people's brains and understand how other other artists work um i'm always fascinated even when i go through galleries i always look at artwork and i just want to know how they made it that's all I, that's all i ever want to know so thank you for being <laughs> here and sharing all those things you know it means a lot um thank you great no worries guys. thank you very much no worries. Um, and please stick around um, because after we've done an introduction on each, uh, each one, we're just going to have a big chat as all, as all artists. So I'm going to move on to our next guest, guys, and that is um, the myth, man, the man, the legend, uh, Mr. Tomb Heads. Um, uh, Tomb Heads, it's really it's exciting to have you here, man, because um, uh, <clears throat> as a lot of the early adopters of the Mingos would know, um, Tomb Heads is one of the only projects that features kind of visually in our, in our Mingos. We've got a sneaky Tomb Head on the moon in the background of all of our mingos um so it means a lot for you to be here tomb heads you've uh here tomb heads and the, and the teams that surround uh tomb heads are absolutely instrumental um on the uh on the phantom chain um so i think it's a really really good opportunity to get you to talk about your art man um so thank you so much for being here no worries freud thanks for having me man appreciate you um approaching me and uh giving me the chance to come on stage and speak in your community no worries, dude. Thank you. Like I, like I said, thank you so much for being here. So, um, so Tomb Heads works on Procreate. Um, he, that's where he makes his digital art. Um, he's uh, worked with acrylics and, and canvas on ske- and like general sketching. It's obviously kind of where he has a history and a past, um, but it's mainly pixel art. And he's, uh, he's, he's exploring more styles at the moment, but yeah, pixel art, at, like I said, everyone knows the Tomb Heads. Um, that's kind of where, where he's found his niche, I guess. Um, he's working on the Tomb Heads MM Wizards <clears throat> at the moment, but otherwise there's not too much else to mention. I'm sure he's, uh, stretched in other directions trying to figure out and explore those styles we just mentioned. Um, so Tomb Heads, my brother, tell us, um, what kind of drove you towards the, the Tomb Heads project? What, what magnetized towards you? What, what, what inspired it? And, um, kind of, I guess, uh, yeah, what, what, what? What dragged you into the space and uh, in, into this this pixel art project that um, has obviously changed your life? <laughs> um, yeah, Freud. I um, I guess mine came from being in DeFi and crypto in general for so long, and um, just always having a passion for creativity and art in general. Um, I was sort of around like when phantom first began and um i noticed that there wasn't really any, like any nfts at all in general it was back in the days of zoo when zoo was kind of like the primary marketplace um and i i guess i just sort of thought uh, i was working full time at the time and i just thought that i would um you know d- have a double there's probably a little bit more to it but um I just sort of started dabbling and uh, things sort of took off. And um, I guess I'm, uh, I'm not, I've never been quite uh, big into digital art. So for me, it's like been a very big learning curve. Um, the biggest frustration is having so many ideas, um, but not having to execute them, uh, not being able to execute them. So, um, which I think is fine because it forces you to uh, work with other people more, which I think is special and important. Um, uh, yeah, and um, yeah, I'm just uh, extremely grateful for the journey that I've been able to go on so far, and um, and yeah, it's been it's been fantastic. Fucking a man. Um, 
tell us about pixel art. Um, so for those for, for those kind of artists out there who've never worked with pixel art and stuff, can you talk about kind of what draws you to, to pixel art um, in terms of the uh, the boundaries and restrictions you have? You know, like um, I'm, I've had, had a couple of pixel artists on here, and it's something I'm always super fascinated about. Just um, you know, usually you've got so many pixels and so much freedom, which kind of makes it almost harder because you've got so many things to do. But um, with pixel art, you've got this grid that you work with. Can you talk about the challenges of pixel art and what, what really makes it, um, re- yeah, what, what really brings an artwork to life with such restrictions that you have? Well, um, pixel art is, well, art is mathematics, in my opinion. And pixel art is just like, I don't know, to me it's like kind of like the calculus of art, you know what I mean? Like if you put like one thing in the wrong spot and you sort of zoom out into your perspective, you can like it just it just doesn't look right. Do you know what I mean? Like where whereas you yeah, it's with very, like it's very unforgiving in a lot of ways, hey. Yeah. Yeah. If you get like a the perspective wrong or like um or like one block is out in, in the wrong spot, it's like, yeah, you, it just doesn't look right. And you can look and you look at it for hours and you'll be like, why does it be like, what's going on here? Why is, why is this, why is this eye not look right or whatever? And, it's, and, reality, and most of the time it literally might be even just one pixel, one or two pixels out of place, right? hundred percent. And the less pixels you work with, the, the more out of place it looks. And the harder so, it becomes, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, so- I mean, that's, this whole thing yeah, fascinates the shit out of me. Well, that's the thing, you know, everyone goes like, I mean, I'm, I'm grateful that um, there's a huge element of nostalgia to pixel art. I mean, I find it strange that I, I uh, gravitate towards the pixel projects more than the traditional uh, art projects or, you know, general digital art projects because, uh, and, and to be honest, I actually couldn't tell you what it is. I think it's just something about growing up around those games like um yeah uh, for sure. like yeah did you ever play many you know like all, i mean all yeah. the way through nintendo you know and yeah, of course of course they'd always have so, even even arcade like i was a big arcade kid you know um and you know yeah that that pixel art was obviously a massive thing in the early arcade games um yeah man and and i find it so interesting how someone can make something look like something with so little. I mean, that's what exactly what I was talking about before, right? That's the, literally the most fascinating part for me. Is um, yeah. It, I'll, I'll be completely honest. Like for the first time I ever kind of engaged with pixel art, um, I was kind of like almost kind of stubbornly being a fine artist. You know what I mean? I was stubbornly kind of just like, nah, nah, nah I don't, I don't, I don't fucking get this, you know. But then. Mm. As soon as that clicked for me, um, and, it, and it happened kind of early on, speaking to some of the early NFT pixel artists, it kind of clicked for me. Yeah, it's like, oh, holy fuck. Like, yeah, that's exactly what they're doing. They're, they're restricting their canvas and their abilities and what's available, them, available to them down so much. So they're working with as little as they can, you know? And um, that just changed my whole perspective on the whole thing and the whole process. So um, can you talk about the backgrounds? Like, what do you do with the with the backgrounds? Like, how do you how do you generate them? They look like they're, I mean, they almost look watercolor inspired. They, they take take a totally different vibe to the um to the foreground image. Can you talk about the generation of the backgrounds? Yeah, I um I guess I just wanted to do something a little bit different, and this all like sort of comes into play with um uh mixing that uh like a kind of like a pixel art with a non pixel art. Um, sort of style, which is something that I've been a, a little project I've been working on in the background. Um, it's, I think it, uh, I don't know, the contrast between the two is, um, yeah, just I guess some sort of like niche little thing that I hadn't really seen before. Like every most projects you see, it's just everything's pixelated. So um, I kind of muck around with the uh, canvas sizes. Um, and by the way, the reason why I like using Procreate so much is just because um, at, at the beginning I was always on the go so much and I just like being able to, because um, I think a lot of people, uh, for people listening, I think a lot of people um, get a little bit surprised when someone uses Procreate for pixel art. But I mean, it's just so uh, versatile. But um, yeah, I, I muck around the um, background images um, uh, with canvas size. So I'll blow it 
I'll start off at like a whatever 60, 60 by 60 or uh, whatever canvas and um, then gradually keep blowing it up as I go to more detail. And then uh, I'll, the last thing I'll do is the background image, which will be at about a thousand by a thousand. And then obviously you lose your pixels at that stage. So um, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I operate. Um, and I've spoken to Phantom, uh, Phantom Punks a couple of times. Obviously, he's a good friend of mine um, because we both sort of started at the same time. And it's been interesting to watch his uh, pixel style evolve as well. And, um, it, yeah, it's uh, he, it, me and him bounce heaps of ideas off each other. And he, he does some crazy shit, man. Like, I asked yeah. him one time. Yeah, it's I insane. was like... Yeah, I was like, what do you do? Like, what's your what's your process and your thing? And then he, he explained it to me, and I was like, dude, that's like, like I've, I did, I would never even have thought of that. And that's that's one of the beauties of art, I guess, as well, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, like, like I was explaining before, that's exactly why I fucking do this thing. Like, yeah, it's sure it's for the community for me, but, but, but for me, it's just like insight into process, which just, just educates me, you know what I mean, in so many ways. Oh, man. Yeah, this is this is an incredible uh, segment, man. You've done so well. Ah, oh, cheers, legend. Thanks so much. Um, can you talk about? Can you talk to, to us quickly about kind of your sketching and um, you know, the introduction was was awesome. Just the way that you found crypto, that or, or, or the way you found your project being heavily involved in DeFi. Um, but can you talk about just more your creative side, like? Um, you know, were you a kid that was, has been sketching all the time? There's never been a time in your life where you haven't been kind of sketching a drawing or has it been something kind of that you've dabbled in and out of? Like, um, what, 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 tell us about the, um, the, the pen holding tomb heads and. Well, um, something sort of hit me before when, uh, Vanguard and Mayo said, um, it sort of starts with an idea and, um, I've always had a massive imagination as um as a child i guess or in general um i constantly find inspiration around me um especially in nature um even just in design in general and um i've just fortunately been lucky enough to be also a person who is able to take action on my imagination as well and sort of bring it forth into uh this world and um I guess, um, I guess, just having a, a, an imagination in, in general, I think that's something that a lot of people, you know, when people say like, oh, like I just, I wish I was, and I could do art, I wish I could do this, and it's like, I think that generally what they lack a lot is just imagination. Uh, it's one of the most, uh, you know, fundamental things to creating, I guess, if not the most fundamental thing. Mm. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of just draw on that from a lot of um i guess a lot of i, I couldn't deny i'd be a lot of uh, anime a lot of uh video games early early video games i don't play them anymore but mm. um saturday, and uh, saturday morning cartoons kind of thing yeah saturday morning cartoons man um even even just like the full old school degen japanese anime um heaps yeah. of inspiration from there those guys had the wildest imaginations and you know they don't give a shit like about what anyone thinks like they just they put it out there and you're just like man this is nuts yeah, and is. that's so cool at the same time yeah anime it's pretty crazy how like inf how um evidently influential um all of that has been throughout i mean m nearly all the artists most of the artists that i speak to every week has, has that comes up at least once or twice but yeah such an epic space um awesome man um i guess the the only other question i want to talk about is um the whole concept i guess about how tomb uh the tomb heads concept came together i know it's obviously tied in with the aesthetic of phantom and and all that but um yeah kind of i guess maybe for people listening as well um you as the artist like um where did the relationship with the auction house and all that sort of stuff all begin um and the, and gab gab and, and and the rest of the crew over there like where did those relationships kind of foster? Yeah, so um, I guess back in the day when um, I was drawing uh, my two meds, like I, I sort of started as a joke, obviously, like I um, because there was no there was no uh, NFTs on Phantom, and I thought, and I, I'd never done digital art before. I'd love um, drawing and painting my whole life and sketching and stuff like that, 
Um, but um, I'd never done pixel art and uh, I was where I was working at the time, like we weren't allowed mobile phones, but we were allowed tablets. And um, mm-hmm. I started, uh, I spent a lot of time in the tomb, like right from the beginning uh, in the tomb finance discord. And um, you know, I would always joke with them, like, why, why didn't they have an uh, NFT and all this sort of stuff? And they weren't very, to be honest, they weren't very, it was probably, what would it have been like maybe during pretty much April last year. And, um, and I just said one day, I was like, oh, I'm going to make, I'm going to make tomb heads like as a joke. And, um, Gab nine, well, Gab was obviously a moderator in there. And, um, I started making them and putting them on zoo and, uh, because I was working, I'd only put like one or two or three up at a time and they would just go straight away. And I'd get messages from, I got this, got these crazy messages from some like really, reputable people in the space which is insane and they're like man like i can't get one like i want one so bad and all this sort of stuff and i was like and i and because i'm just like a i don't know i, I just felt so um i'm a really like uh, compassionate person and i was like fuck how can i how can i get these like to to people like more fairly and um that's when I spoke to Gab and he, he was like, oh, why don't we just host a live auction? Like, he's like, draw me some, draw me some pieces up and we'll host a live auction in the uh, Discord. And um, I was like, yeah, oh, that's cool. That, that way that like everyone gets a chance and, and the price is determined by, you know, the demand of the buyers. And, mm. and it just, yeah, it went, it went absolutely bonkers, man. Um, I had like a couple of friends in the Discord uh, at the time and um, I kind of feel... I mean, I kind of feel bad that uh, it's, it was like riding the coattails of um, of Tomb Finance. Like, I would prefer to have a more. Um, I can't. I can't. I can't deny. I'd prefer to have a more uh, organic. Um, uh, how do I explain it? Original approach to the whole thing. I mean, a yeah, Tomb yeah. Ed, I guess, in general, is a. Um, original concept i mean i i in a sense i speak to um people who don't know anything about DeFi or two meds and they'll be like oh that's so cool man just like rolls off the tongue so i don't know i we tried to break away as much as we could from it um as we got bigger um but i i can't deny that it's it right it rides the coattails of tomb finance in a sense from the beginning anyway yeah but i think i think you've done a, i think you've done a wonderful job and it's kind of become you know at least something that's going to catapult you and allow you to kind of express yourself further down the track you know whenever you choose to yeah absolutely for sure man and and that's the key to this space that a lot of people can't work out is that you need to prove to the community that you're going to be able be in it for the long run you know that's it um yeah and and you can tell straight away now and i think people are starting to wisen up as well you can tell straight away when someone's uh in their like you know their um where their consciousness sort of rests with the whole environment and, you know, whether or not they're going to be here for like five days or you can see straight away if someone's like, if a, if a group or a community of developers or artists or whatever, go, like they, they turn around to their community and go, you know, oh, I'm, I'm actually going to be here for as long as possible, like with you guys and we, I want to build something special. Um, I can see that myself from a mile away and like you guys have done that as well. You guys have proven that time and time again, and that's um, something that I really appreciate about um, you in the space as well. Yeah, man, I think you're. I think you're absolutely right. It um, it does come down to whether you're in it in the long game. I think it's it's just that magnet or a virus. It's the sort of true virus that's been spreading. You know, that once you catch the bug, you're in. Um, but it's just whether you catch the bug or not. Hundred percent, man. Hundred percent. It's all about the community, man. It really is. I mean, anything any, that really anything matters. is anything is anything that we do is as humans in general. We, we it, it's so much stronger with the community, and it's just so much more valid. I think. Absolutely, man. And I and I yeah, still get astonished at times that some people can't work that out. <laughs> yeah, give it time. I say, give it time. Yeah. Thanks so much, man. Um, that was that was absolutely epic, dude. Um, oh no, it's so good to get Honestly. like a, a proper insight into that. You know just um, separate from the whole finance and auction house side, just like kind of who you are and where you come from. So thanks so much for that, dude. Absolutely, man. Um, I really appreciate it and um, keep doing what you're doing.
and uh yeah thank you so much fucking hey man i won't stop don't worry it's all good um, love brother cheers wicked all right we're going to move on to our uh next guest um i'm super excited about footprints on mars um this is really interesting um i spent a <laughs> i was up very late last night kind of delving into some of the concepts that were mentioned um this is an artist that's quite different um um, just in terms of like a bit, a bit away from the more illustration side. Um, so, footprints on Mars. I'm just linking, linking you guys um, his stuff at the moment. Okay, so <clears throat> it's modern expressionism, modern interpretation. Um, okay, so this footprints on Mars uses processing in Java, so programs, right? And um, he makes art through code and um, moves machines into learning. Um, different manipulation of of pixels and 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 a canvas a space okay it's 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 he calls it he breaks it up into three uh two categories modern expressionism and modern interpretation okay his um his idea of modern expressionism is to explore the realm um and this is super fucking interesting okay so he wants to explore the realm which um hasn't been previously previously available or existed to humans he says mere humans <laughs> Um, using only our nat- being able to use only our natural abilities, so he wants to explore a place that we can't go. Okay, um, modern interpretation um, is the space that exists between the two-way communications between him and the op- open source artificial intelligence. So he's talking about a conversation that happens between himself and the computer, and then his his uh, role as the artist is literally to just choose a time and dictate when to capture the image. Um, so he mentioned um, technology like flow fields, which I started reading into, which is extremely interesting. So it's building a, a grid of pixels and then basically um, determining the movement of those pixels or the, or the grid and then creating lines inside of that grid um, determined by the lines movements. And then, then artistically, I guess, just applying more lines and uh, adding textures which they call Perlin noise which is like algorithmically created textures essentially essentially um th- obviously i'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let footprints talk more about this um it's it's extremely fascinating um how this stuff comes together um and just look into it as well just generally as a um as a uh <laughs> as an art form because um if we're here uh, using this as a space to talk about the future of art this is probably something that's close to a visual representation of that future. So, footprints. Um, thank you so much for joining us and joining us at such late late, late notice. You just came on just only uh, yesterday. So, thank you so much for being here, brother. Yeah, thank. Um, yes, thank you very much, man. No worries. Thank you. No worries. It's, it's a so, pleasure to be here, Lily. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, footprints. Um, obviously, just just get straight into it please tell us about this concept of exploring the realm that hasn't been existed to mere humans um what, like to t- tell us about this relationship with the computer that you're building okay first of all i have to mention that you know uh, i do believe that you know uh, we as a human we can do things that computer wouldn't you know wouldn't able to act wouldn't be able for the computer to achieve what we can do you know with that thing that we can done way better than that. But there are also things that, you know, computer may be better at, you know, uh, executing it without, with, with, uh, without, uh, how do I say this? Computer is a bet, is a bet, uh, it can do a better job in executing something that we could do something like, okay, uh, if I give you an example, I ask you to draw a, then 10,000 lines or 10,000 triangle that would consume, yeah. you know, it, 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 you know, it's almost impossible to achieve that. And, but when you do it with computer, you could actually do it within, you know, a, a second. And with that ability, I can explore into, you know, a different variation of, you know, that, uh, that 10,000 triangle, I can, you know, put it in different places. I can, uh, uh, what interesting thing about one of the interesting about Genetrip, uh, what, uh, coding art is, is you can use randomness 
and you can actually control the randomness within it. You know, you can uh, random the color, but you you can random. You know, uh, I can random four different colors, five different color, and I can uh, uh, perfectly execute it in a way that you know I want. 10% of this color, I want 15% of this color, 35% of this color, 20% of this color. It, it, it can be done. I can, uh, I can make a 10,000 line that, you know, uh, that uh, direct in different angle. I can also do so many different things with the use of computer, you know. Uh, so, that's how I got into it, Lily. Uh, I actually got into this through uh, one of my favorite artists. Uh, he call, uh, his name is uh, Max Cooper. He actually a uh, mm -hmm. uh, musician, but he also worked with visual art as well. And he had his uh, album cover made by Tyler Hop. Uh, I'm not sure that you heard of him, but he is pretty, pretty famous uh, lately. Uh, yeah, so uh, when I saw the artwork the first time, I was like, what? I, I didn't know anything about uh, uh, generative art before. So I, I was kind of shocked that uh, how, how can he achieve that, that kind of complexity, mm. that kind of uh, precision, you know, that kind of uh, everything. It just looks so... Um, it, it just blown my mind that you know you can you can achieve something that you know uh, we wouldn't be able to achieve by just you know drawing by hand you know mm -hmm. uh, you can you can got into uh, uh, for example four field uh, that you talk about uh, basically what four field does is is laying a grid onto the canvas and moving the lines uh, no uh, moving the lines like how, how how do i put it each line in the in the fulfill will have the property of are uh, not overlapping meaning that you know each line within the within the space uh, uh doesn't matter how many lines you put at uh, 10,000 line each line will not are uh, overlapping uh, so that that's almost it, it, that's almost where like the flow comes like like a river it, like a river or something like you you your code is almost like the 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 current I guess or the way that the river flows and then everything in that river just they don't touch but it follows that 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 flow. yeah it it follow the path that you know uh, I specify into into the program that's so fucking interesting um can you can you please talk about how where you start like how this how this comes together because so, so for other artists and anyone in here who, who is fascinated about the final image that we we can see like tell us about the the, the process like you know this is to, in my mind this is potentially evolving so differently as you input more things into the program right and as it just keeps building and building and building and building and you keep adding and adding and adding and inputting information until you take a snapshot can you talk us through uh, talk us through your whole process how it begins from your idea to when you when your final export you know you mean for the for the list uh listed image that you just yeah uh, i mean let, we can use that as an example that's a good that's a good one for just for everyone in the chat there there's the latest room in the uh, the image in the chat room um yeah t talk about talk about this one okay all right First of all, I have to tell you that uh, modern expression is the collection where I write the code myself and I execute the code myself. So everything was done by by me. Why modern in the interpretation, which is the listed image that you posted, uh, is the collection which uh, which I use machine learning to create the art and machine learning. By machine learning, I mean the, the open source artificial, artificial intelligence. Uh, basically, what I do is I use a Google Collab, which is the biggest uh, 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 hub for the uh, artificial intelligence scientists, you know, uh, uh, those computer scientists to work on the artificial intelligence uh, 
uh, how do I say uh, to to work on that scope. Okay, basically, and it it is licensed by the MIT, so it's 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 pretty pretty uh, legit one. So I use that space where you know people are uh, open that information. They they share they basically share the thought code and. What I do there is uh, I give when uh, I feed the artificial intelligence the, uh, my my personal Im uh, personal image my own artwork I feed it with a uh, it could be drawing it could be a uh, generative it could be a uh, computer art it could be just about anything so I feed it into uh, the machine learning. Okay, so you so, for this particular one you are actually inputting an image. Um, and then and then applying the code onto the image is that right? Uh, no, the code itself is has already been written. Ah, so, yes. Okay. Yep, yep. Yep. So, and what I do is I feed it. Uh, what 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 they call is is they call uh, to train the AI. So yep. basically, yep. If you if you wouldn't train it with your uh, own set of images or, or your own sketches, mm -hmm. uh. This this AI will take the information or the images from the internet, the whole internet. Right. So, it so there's a lot of people doing that, yeah. So when they doing that, they sometimes they produce the image that's that that pretty close to each other and and uh, and it can be easy easily copy and you know duplicate. So what I did yep. there is I feed it with my own uh, data set, and I try and I try to make it learn how to how to uh, how to uh, generate the, the the image that I find uh, artistically beautiful. So, so by doing that is you know I keep training keep training it when when it doesn't uh, when it doesn't uh, generate. Uh, the image that that I find interesting, uh, I could I could uh, alert them to know that this is this is this is this they are going on the wrong path, and I redo it again, keep re keep re redoing it until until it learns uh, the direction that I want it to take, but still the outcome is still uh, uh, how we say the outcome is still. Uh, fully generated by the, the artificial intelligence, and what wow. I find really interesting is that uh, is 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 the sweet it, it, it is really sweet point where where you you know you you see the technology that's come in and being being adopted into the art scene and probably uh, uh, will shape the way the art scene will be will be seen in the future. If you get what I yeah, mean, yeah, I, I, I think, um, I think in general, it, it's, it's, it's really good because there's so, there's, you know, we're, we're still trying to get through so many years of ego, the ego being so attached to art, and I think NFT space, one of the the, the good things about it is, you know, with with pushes of enigmas and and Twitter handles and not, and the fear of doxing and stuff, yeah. it's kind of it's kind of made people, um be represented by their work rather than their ego and what they have to say. And I think the more that that, that machine um, or AI intervention uh, kind of has an input into art and the more people see that a, 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 an, a computer manipulated by an artist can present and create art that's just so mind-blowing on so many levels, like I think there's just an appreciation of, uh, of art speaking for itself, you know, and not really mattering about who created it. And more about what it actually looks like and taking it for what it is. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. Because I think art, art by itself is, you know, uh, art or art is subject to criticism, you know, in a way. So, what I'm trying to do is, what I'm trying to do with the, the specifically with this uh, modern interpretation, is, you know, I, I is, I want. It's basically the aesthetic research project of me, where I, where I try to explore the the, the aesthetic possibility that you at the meeting point of human and machine. You know, I want to find out how well uh, machine learning 
could understand human languages. You know, what if I put just a, a text into it? What if I put a whole sentence? What if I put a broken sentence? You know, how how would they in, interpret it? Would they interpret it differently? Would they interpret it the same way? You know, and I also would would it be possible for the machine learning to understand what is uh, aesthetic, what is beauty for 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 us human? Could could it yeah could it understand that? You know, I, I think is. It has a whole lot of possibility in there, you know. I, mm. I mean, it is it is an area that you know is still, uh, still very very wide, and you know we we still have a long way to go, uh, to to try to to understand what can be done with the use of you know the technology that's come in because you know yeah. the society the world is you know ever evolving, right? And I. Th- I think it's fair to say that you know uh, art is always involved with with the world as well. Yeah. Yeah, of course. It's always a, it's almost a mirror, right? Yeah. In some exactly. Way. Yeah. Exactly. It is always a mirror of you know the 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 the, the feeling of the, the 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 population, the the current. Uh, yeah, society you know, and the world. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Incredible, man. So. Um, can you talk um, and tell us a little bit about, um, obviously, your introduction to the space, um, uh, your current collection, and I guess um, your plans for the future? Okay, so I got into space uh, through my fa- Actually, I have I have a background in finance. I was a banker for a few years. Then after that, I quit a, a few years back. Yeah, and. I had an epiphany basically, and I, I really want to explore uh, uh, the art, artistic art, artistic path. So I started uh, I started out as a D, uh, as doing a DJ a few years uh, two years ago, and I started to learn about uh, coding as well around that time. And then after that, I got into crypto last year. And they didn't do so well uh, back then, so I always learning new thing about crypto, like so and if so, I heard about NFT. I I didn't pay too much attention at it at first, and only until uh, July last year where I started to 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 uh, publish my first collection on uh, OpenSea on Matic. And uh, a month after that, uh, my first bid got sold by someone in in the Phantom community, and so we talked a bit about stuff. And he was like, "Okay, okay, that that is so." So he let me know that there is this uh, this scene in in Phantom Spare, this NFT scene that is growing, and it still took me a while. I'll, 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 after that, I I start to also sell my NFT on Tesos as well, and I was doing well there, so I didn't think much about the Phantom. And then I met, uh, I think I I opened my Discord, which back at that time I I rarely check my Discord, and I saw a message uh, from Jet, who is also my partner now, and he was asking me to try to join the, the phantom space so i really find it interesting and i really like him you know I li- and he even offered to help me uh, setting up my discord and stuff so i was like okay let's let's take the chance let's let's try so that's how i got into the phantom space and i think in my i launched my first collection modern expression on 31st, uh, 31st October last year. Mm-hmm. And this modern uh, expression collection is the, uh, is the collection where I try to focus on the use of curly night and fulfill specifically, you know. Uh, I plan to have about uh, Probably less than 40, 40 uh, NFT on, on the collection. And now we are about halfway through. 
And what I like about this four field and, and Perlina is if you look at the artwork, I, I could not, you can look at it from every, every, every angle and every side, you know, you can put it upside down. You can, you can, you can put it up horizontally. You can put it up uh, vertically and, uh, they, they will still make sense to you. It, it will also give you the feeling that it's supposed to, even you, you, you move it, you know, in different direction. So is is really is is something that I fall in love with. It's something that I really want to explore. So that's how I make my this this collection the modern expression here. And now, right now, I'm trying to. Uh, I already I already started to bridge uh, my mathic collection to Phantom, which is the modern interpretation. Right now, so I'm trying to move that. Uh, collection to here because uh, I'm not really uh, show my stuff on Mathic anymore. I don't really uh, I don't really involve with the community there. So F Phantom has you. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Phantom has been very, very nice to me. You know, I yeah. I really, I really have. Uh, I'm really glad, and I'm I'm really glad that you know I have been. Uh, lucky enough to be introduced into this space, you know, the people are really nice yeah. and very supportive as well, you know. So yeah, I'm sure. really happy to be here. Yeah, so that's why I, I bridging my mathic collection to the fan, uh, to, to the to Phantom and giving away most of the, I think, uh, I never saw a, a piece in modern interpretation, printed, uh, modern interpretation collection yet because uh, when you buy a piece on a modern expression, you also get a piece on modern interpretation as well. Uh, yeah, okay. So, so yeah, that, that's something I just want to, to, to give back for my, you know, uh, early supporter on the scene is something that I think. Uh, and there's, uh, there's physicals and a website and stuff coming at the end of February. Is that right? Um, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So and, just, and... yes. Yeah, you go, you go. No, uh, now Jedida is helping me uh, making the website and uh, mm -hmm. of uh, benefit to the uh, collector as well. But I think um, Jed, Jed could explain it way better than me. So if you want to. Yeah, Jed, go for it. Yeah. Just so basically, I'm I'm still learning solidity uh, right now, but I'm learning in just mm -hmm. just for it. Uh, I've done much of the front end for for the website, and uh, I just wanted to make a, a special space for the holders, and then uh, you can go and download uh, you know high resolution of uh, your pieces, something like uh, 10k for example. If you yeah, want wow. to uh, to print a large size, uh, so that was the first thing. And uh, the second thing, uh, I want us to give the the ability to anyone to choose the the print size he wants for for any of the pieces he own, and uh, have a signed piece uh, sent to him. Just uh, the shipping, uh, the basic expense cost will be uh, covered with a smart contract, and then uh, you get your piece at home with no interaction or whatsoever. So this is basically easy to do by hand right now because we have a, a small collection. But I think long term, we want to make a bigger mint, something like, uh, I don't know, 700 or more pieces, you know, yeah. uh, with the flow field generating uh, on the mint, something like that. I know I, I would love to make this with a with footprints so maybe it could be beneficial for future holders in the um, midterm if uh, you have a piece you can have it uh, at home as well i love it so like the website almost becomes the workshop you go to the workshop and yeah. you, get, you take your nft and you get it built and you like uh, an client. online art gallery some yeah. kind i love it i think it's awesome um thanks both of you so much uh for all of that um i think a lot of us kind of gain a lot of insight into a different form of art and expressionism. So thanks so much for the insight, guys. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank you very much for all you do for the Fathom Spence, man. 
No worries, man. It's my absolute pleasure. I, I, I enjoy it. Like I said, it's educative for me. So thanks so much for being here. Um, all right, we're going to move on to our final NFT, uh, uh, NFT and artist. Um, uh, this is Narayan. Narayan is over on the AVAX chain because um, that's what we do here at the Pink Flamingo Soja Club. We um, see art as transparent and all artists, um, regardless of their chain, should, should get a voice. Um, so, <clears throat> Nayan. Uh, Nayan's working on a project called the One Earth Project. Um, it's, uh, it's coming very soon. Um, she creates her artwork in Procreate. Um, um, other than using digital art, she's quite new to it. Um, but before digital art or a journey on step into g- digital art, she uses watercolor, ink, and paper. So she's quite traditional in traditional forms. Um, so she, it's her genre, she describes her genre as obviously digital in dis- illustration um, with an in- injection of spiritual and psychedelic themes. Um, what the One Earth Project um, is six collections uh, launching throughout the year, which is this year. Um, and then the uh, Nicaragua collection is launching February the 3rd and the Oceans collection is sometime in April. So throughout, incrementally throughout the year, One Earth, uh, the One Earth NFT project is going to be um, releasing their NFTs. But um, it's uh, the incentive behind this project is really, really interesting. Um, obviously, we'll talk about the art and focus on the art, but I think it's worth um, uh, really talking about the incentive behind this project because it's, um, yeah, as uh, you can, you can uh, obviously assume it in, in the name. Um, so <clears throat> Narayan, um, thank you so much for being here. Um, tell us about your history as an artist. Um, where do you come from as an artist and, uh, how did you find the space? How did you find crypto core and how did you find yourself, um, tied up with the, uh, the one earth NFT project? Oh, hi. Thanks for having me here. Um, well, I don't come from (laughs) the digital world at all. Um, I, I studied fine arts and um and uh, fashion design and i kind of had some but it was like a while ago so um i had some photoshop classes uh when i was studying fashion design but nothing advanced like very like basic and and i didn't um at that time i didn't want to i didn't feel that i wanted to um dive into the digital world and actually i was very resisting it for many many years and because i only wanted to have i didn't even want to print my art i just wanted to sell um original pieces because um i felt that an original piece is different than prints or copies so i was just resisting for so many years, digital world was like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. But then um, it was recently um, I decided that, I don't know, something happened and um, in my mind. And I was like, well, okay, I'm going to try that. And so I started using um, Procreate and uh, exploring and at first feeling that it was all very strange. Like I, I felt like I was just trying something, but I would never achieve anything good. But well, uh, <laughs> and then I started having a lot of fun, and um, and then uh, a few months ago, I um, came across a post uh, on Facebook by. Um, cultural detox oh i know um we know each other kind of from the um the yoga world because we we are in the same yoga community but we didn't at that point we didn't really we have met like really briefly uh we have friends in common but um but we didn't really know each other but i knew that it's someone i can trust and so I saw his post, like talking about NFT, and I'm like, I'm not a digital person. At, I mean, now I'm becoming a digital geek, but <laughs> but <laughs> NFT and all these, I was like, I don't even know what this is, but I'm going to send a message because it feels good. <laughs> I don't know. And so yeah, nice, I sent him. Nice. Yeah, I'm an artist. Hi, um, NFT project, great, whatever. 
<laughs> what's going on and so and then we started talking about the project i was like wow this is, this is actually a really beautiful project and i started getting very excited and that's how it all started but it's my first project my first project uh as okay, um as so, a digital okay. artist so how long after you started using procreate did you um did you get hit up by a cultural and kind of throw yourself into this project like a year uh, no, no. Um, okay six, wow six months that's wild. and i was not even i mean i was kind of trying things but not really not not at all working every day or anything i just tried a few things and i was like meh but then with this project obviously i had to <laughs> really explore <laughs> and and work a lot um so yeah <laughs> amazing amazing so um tell us a little about this this collection and like um and what what what, what the one earth um nft collection is about and and also just touch on kind of like what you've um the way that you've interpret interpreted like you know obviously cultural detoxes and uh has come to you and explained the uh the project and uh how, how have you taken that in what is that and how did you kind of interpret um all of that so this uh first collection is about nicaragua and so it's um about the fauna and flora of nicaragua um so there are um, a total of oh, 7,000 something cards, uh, but I, um, there are 88 that are hand drawn. And then they have um, also, we have shiny versions. Um, and there are some like, animals and plants and um, um there are also um landscapes that are and these are there yeah there are ecosystems and these are unique cards and so this project um for this project 45 percent of the proceeds will go to uh charities and for all the projects but um and that's actually what i really like about this project is that it's art but it's much more than that it gives back to the earth and to local communities and uh, really um wanting to make a change in people's lives and um supporting um sustainable ways of living and um supporting the earth mother earth and nature and I find it really, really beautiful. Amazing. <clears throat> and so you were going to kind of given a lot of freedom um, throughout this process. They kind of explain the, the, what they, what they wanted. And then you, have you kind of gone, gone away and come up with, um, I'm just trying to figure out how, how, how much of it is like a deep expression of your own style and, um, and, or how much of it is, is tied to the, the, uh, the concept of the project. Like you just got, you got, you kind of get, got the freedom and you just ran, ran wild with it yeah <laughs> yeah that was great like yeah i had like um a list with the animals but i could change i could that's what i like to have to you know be free to um express myself and um yeah it was great i like that <laughs> epic and so you're you um you start everything starts as a sketch is that right? Everything starts as a sketch or starts as an import of a photo and then you kind of like start start with there or some sort of inspiration in some way and then kind of um, over and over and manipulate the colors and the vibrance? Is that, is, can, you know? Can yeah, you... I don't, uh, it's all digital. I don't even sketch on paper before. I just uh, look for inspiration, um, um, photos, colors, um, and then I just uh, I take a photo for um for inspiration and from there I it's all digital I don't yeah I don't sketch before on paper yeah epic and <clears throat> how long does one of these take 
like do you approach each one kind of individually and um you said you mentioned the word 7000 can you kind of talk more about um because it's it's really interesting oh no it's not it's 2000 two th- well still mixed- still 2000 like that's, a, that's, a, that's a large number and for someone who's not you know, only been using procreate less than a year you've gone from a physical medium getting thrown into a digital medium and now um, here you are using AI in, in, in integration and um, like to, to talk about that kind of that process for you. Yeah. Uh, well, I didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't draw uh, 2,700 cards. Um, I drew 88. Yeah. Okay. And then um and plus the shiny versions but the shiny version were easier and they were quicker because uh it it's it it's the same animals it's just the background that changes and also like um modifying the colors of the animals but it's not um the the big part was the 88 cards um and it it was i didn't i didn't think i could do it really when i started it was like ah. I don't know what I'm doing because <laughs> I've never done anything like that. Oh, I'm I I was really starting with digital because um it, it was yeah my first project. So I was just started. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna start and see. Um, but it worked. <laughs> I don't hey, even know how it yeah, just worked. I'm, I'm in the exact same boat, like in a lot of ways. Like I didn't really have many artists like I do now to, to reach out and ask about how they approached it. You know, when we, when we went into the Mingos, I just kind of threw myself in it. So, you know, don't laugh, mm. don't, don't laugh it down too much. Like it's, I think a lot of artists are in a similar position. We're just all on the deep end, um, doing what we do best, which is just, um, is problem solving. <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, th- thanks so much for, for for everything. This is this has been such such a great insight. Um, I just wanted to ask one more question. Um, what's next for you? Like you now that you've um, kind of been thrown so deep into it after being kind of far removed, um, what do you see yourself kind of um, falling into next, or what, what's the next step? Well, the next step is the next um, collection, which is the oceans. And um, so I'm working on it now, and it's amazing. <laughs> I'm very excited. I just started, but I'm very excited because I love um, coral reefs and oceans, and like um, it's it's um, it's a world that I really like. So um, yeah, that's the next step, and then um, and then we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. That's a and that's obvi- a good and obviously step. just keep on like you know keeping in learn- learning and going deeper on um on Procreate and, yeah and you know bending your style and all that sort of stuff. I'm really excited to see what comes out. Um, obviously you've found a space um where you can kind of be valued and express yourself at the same time. So you know, congrats, congrats. Um, I'm sure you know the AVAX. I know the AVAX community is really um is really supportive. It's just like the Phantom community. So. It's um. I think you've got a great team behind you and good people. Yeah, good people. Yeah. I'm I'm just really excited for what what comes. Um. So thanks, thanks heaps for for being here. Oh, we have um a gift for you. You got a gift. <laughs> yeah, I think cultural detox is gonna send send it now. Uh oh. yeah, we made a, we decided to create a a flamingo card honorary oh and for you. <laughs> that is so epic. Oh, that's the, I was, I I was amazed by that. I was like, uh, and it said honorary as well. So like that, that, that's so epic. Thank you so much. That's, um, that's the kindest thing ever. Um, mm-hmm. you, did, you didn't have to do that. Um, and that's a sexy flamingo. Oh, it was fun. Much. Look at the legs on that thing. It's so good. Oh yeah. It's there already. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Thank you so much guys. That's, that's, um, that's epic. <laughs> I, uh, I appreciate that a lot. Um, and again, uh, just you know, back to you. Thank you so much. Thank everything. Uh, thank, thanks for all that insight, and uh, and taking the time out of your day to be here and talk about your um your experience. It's uh, thank you. It's great for everyone. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Just uh, just really quickly, I'm just going to go th- through everyone we just heard from. Um, you heard from the Portalheads team, um, Abso and Vanguard. Um, 
you've heard from Tomb Heads, um, the, the man, the myth, the legend, um, the One Earth NFT, um, Narayan just then, and uh, Footprints on Mars. Um, thank you so much to thank gang guys for all your uh, your insight and your stories. Um, it's it's absolutely invaluable for um, for people getting into the space, people wanting to know more, and people who are, are your collectors and and own your artwork. Um, they they very much enjoy this. So um, it's a thanks from them and a thanks from me. Um, I'm just going to move on straight to our uh, our, little, our topics for today. Um, I've got a, a few things I kind of want to I wanted to put to the to the crew. Um, my first question. Um, to, it goes to everybody. Um, is what is the most valuable? Um, and by the way, it's speak. It's speak whenever you need. Speak whenever you want. At this stage, we're just gonna have a good old, uh, a good old yarn. We call it here in Australia, good old yarn, good old chat. Um, what's the most valuable form of support you know as an artist in this space? Where do you really feel support? Just for everyone listening, like what what is the most tangible and most valuable form of support that you know that comes from this space? I, I got a quick one. Um, I think when people, when people, your community openly tells you what your art makes them feel like, that is very, to me, that's very valuable. And it's also a special moment because it's just that ultimately that's what art is. It's like, what does it make you feel like? And what 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 does it give to you on this like on this level that you can't even kind of articulate? And and, and when when some people uh, uh, like are open about it and they're like, hey, like I, this reminds me of this, or I had this one. It reminds me of this one moment that I had, or like, oh, it reminds me of this other artist that I like. I think that's that's the most uh, supported that I I personally feel because it. it like you, you know that you've made some sort of a connection, and that's that's uh, priceless. For sure. For sure, that was good. that was that was epic. Anyone else want to chime in on that? That's a universal agreement. I think everyone just wants the same thing. So, <laughs> I love it. Um, for anyone listening, they, you heard it first. That's 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 what we want as artists. Is just just to know that we've um converted some sort of story and, and made some sort of connection no matter what degree that is um okay so this is my other question what's going to be the make or break factors for artists within this space whether it's now moving into the future five ten years what are the make or break factors for artists in the nft space remember it's chime in talk at any point just speak away that's a tough question, man, because That's I don't think anyone about. wants to. Dic- I don't think anyone really wants to dictate that. <laughs> of course, no one wants to dictate it. I understand this. Um, I just is, I guess, more like the things that we've learnt and the things that we can see. I think it's just important to have a, to connect with the the your supporter, your community. I think. I think that's really important for you know for an artist to moving forward in any community at all. You know, you know, you got to be uh, connect with uh, your crew, your people. You got to uh, be someone they can they can talk to. You know, just to connect with them. I wish I could do more than I do now. And I'm trying to improve on that as well. So, yeah, that 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 that's my opinion. Yeah, I, I, the another thing is, I think that of course we can talk about you know keeping up keeping up with the technology, keeping up with what's going on in the space. Those things are kind of te- I feel like technical things that that um, will help people, you know, it, it is a make or break because you kind of have to keep up with uh, all, with it all, all the time. But I also have to bring up uh, being able to sustain your craft is going to be really important. Be, being able to not burn yourself out on just one project is going to be really important. Um, I'm seeing, actually, I'm starting to see too many artists sharing their uh, stories where they're losing their health because they haven't slept in weeks. 
uh, just a friend of mine sent me a picture of them getting literally hospitalized because they were so sleep deprived and uh, yeah. like they, they just lost it, you know? And, and, and as artists, as developers, as just participants in this space, I think like keeping each other in check and, you know, making sure that this you're, 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 you're living your life in addition to making your art is going to be hugely important. And that's a long-term play for, for all of us. Um, and that's uh, super important, I think. For sure. I think, yeah, the mental health thing is, um, is definitely a conversation to have. Um, maybe even the next topic we kind of go on to, what do you guys do? Um, each of you, what, what, what's your kind of methods for taking a break, stepping back, um, regaining your mental health and um, staying on top of um, the old ticker upstairs. Yeah, what, what I mean. Maybe well, you yeah. Can, yeah. Well, for me, for example, personally, um, it's about having another creative outlet that you know is not, um, you know, taking your big, big, big amount of time. And for me, that's music. Like, you know, trying to, you know, express yourself on another medium that's completely different than what's, you know, technically your job is, um, I think is a good way to stay both fresh and also, I think, healthy. So you, <clears throat> you step away into a different art form kind of, way, kind of thing. You step into music for yeah. a bit and that gives you a fresh kind of perspective and a, and a break. Yeah. I guess so, yeah. I mean, um, I think uh, it's also like, you know, since it's a hobby more than anything, um, it sort of becomes, you know, comes with less pressure. And I kind of like that. I think that's sort of like, you know, uh, sort of like this personal, safe, creative space. And it's nice to have that. For sure. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Find, finding the thing that you won't they're finding the thing that keeps you engaged but doesn't give doesn't put as much pressure on you as your main project or your your full-time job or whatever you want to call it i think yeah. i think that is that is uh that is important it's it's um, funny oh sorry man oh uh, go ahead go ahead uh i was just gonna say it's um funny uh freud I actually, um, obviously, and I'm sure everyone here has experienced this, but um, when I was first going through like a bit of um, an increase of volume of like uh, community engagement, um, I felt extreme amounts of pressure to um, cater to, um, you know, that attention and, um obviously tomb heads and the auction house and everything like that uh, went right to the top of my list and of priorities and um, everything that used to be above it was um, failing but um, all those things were truly what were uh, important and you know fundamental to me functioning at a good level and all my relationships and my own personal health and stuff like that and I actually sat down with myself one day and had like a big one-on-one -on -one with myself and I said and I and I wrote down like everything that was a priority in my life at the time and um, I realized that sort of like uh, exercise and even music is a huge hobby of mine and uh, had like gone down to the bottom of the list and I, I shifted everything around and I actually put two meds like right at the bottom and um, what what happened was quite amazing was um, I realized that once my health and like my sleep and everything like that was good, that I was actually getting more out of tomb heads, um, even though it was at the bottom of my list. So yeah, I don't know for anyone listening, uh, who's, you know, got those priorities mixed up because of, uh, changes in the, in their environment. Um, yeah, just, just kind of realized that, um, if, if your health is good, uh, in general, then uh, most of the other things I find, for me personally anyway, uh, become even better. So uh, don't sure. be afraid. Yeah. 
I think there, there is a conversation in that as well, though, about um, the importance of teamwork, I think, because, um, correct me if I'm wrong, um, those priorities, one might not even, might the, the team the team's probably the, the, the same thing that's uh, responsible for taking that priority to the top, but it's also the thing that allows you to put it back at the bottom. Because I think um, having it, you know, if, if things really pick up and everything every, everything starts to explode, I think it's um, even if it's one person, even if it's one or one extra person or, or two extra people, having a small team around the kind of the, the artwork and the stuff that you're doing, even if, if it's um, just just hard out collectors that kind of want to help out. Um, do you do you not agree that the importance of, of, of a team is really is it's really important for you to be able to actually reprioritize and, 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 and shuffle those priorities around? We are blessed to have an amazing team of people, actually. I think they're here, right, Absol? Oh, yes. <laughs> um, but, yeah, uh, I think the, having, uh, that, you know, having the team, you know, it's an amazing support. And it's also, you know, pushing you even, you know, further than you can imagine. So it's... Great, both ways. Yeah, that 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 support system is super important. I think being, um, I mean, two heads like that's that's. I think that was spot on. Like being able to, uh, you know, take the time to prioritize things and reprioritize things in in your life and seeing how things stack up is super important. Having having a team or just community members that you can reach out to um, and, and, and be also honest with your current state of affairs, you know, like there were times when uh, I was so exhausted that I, you know, kind of uh, wave the flag and I say, Hey, like I, I, I need a, I need a break. And our uh, rest of our team stepped in uh, and 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 this happened, you know, for for almost all of the team members, and it's really really important to be honest in those moments. Otherwise, you know, burnout burnout doesn't do anyone any good. So uh, it's 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 really really important. But even the community uh, provides that support system in a sense too, right? On Absolutely. Level, which is, you know, I think the community is also part of the team, whether you're working as a team or like as a solo artist, like Apso said. I think community is a very big part of it. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, um, Jedediah and Footprints, I guess you're a good example of that. Um, Jedediah, you're obviously someone who got introduced to Footprints work as a collector. And um, now you guys have found a relationship where you're working as a team. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I uh, I I saw a footprints uh, art on I think it was the Tin Falls uh, hangout, and uh, I directly contacted him, and that's how we met. In fact, yeah, yeah and, exactly, and exactly like you say, you know, uh, having a tree a, a teamwork, a good teamwork is really important. You know, uh, being able to talk to someone when you feel pressure or, you know, someone who can listening to you, who know what's going on, you know, who, who kind of get where, uh, where you're coming from and, and all that, you know, that's really uh, help out uh, emotionally a lot, you know, someone to give you support and, you know, uh, you know, push, push you through the, you, you hard times. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I think it's in, invaluable. Um, and Narayan, just quickly, you 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 almost the the team found you. So the team was already built before they found you, and you kind of just kind of waltzed on in to a really really supportive and epic team. So it's obviously important to you as well. Yeah. Yeah, for me, yeah, it's really important to because it's um uh, it's a it can be a lot of pressure that I was putting on myself <laughs> to create the artwork but I, I feel so uh, supported and there's so much kindness that mm. yeah it's uh, it's it's amazing and really important for me to um, have a good um, environment even if it's uh, virtual I mean it's not virtual but I, I, we're not <laughs> working together physically but 
It's, yeah, it's, for sure. It's really good. Amazing, guys. Well, we're, we're getting pretty close to calling it a day, I think. Um, I just want to give an opportunity if there's anyone in the audience who's kind of had a question brewing um, or even wants to step up and, 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 and ask a question on stage or just type it into the chat room. Um, now's your opportunity. I'll give you a couple of minutes as we kind of wrap up here to, to throw them in. Um, but otherwise, um, I'm just going to go back through everyone that's um, had the opportunity to, uh, to, to talk and talk about who they are as artists um, today. Um, we've had Portal Heads, which is built of a team of Abso and, um, and Vanguard. Um, they work with Photoshop and they're um, motion graphic designers, um, and they basically combine their skills together to create what we know as the Portal Heads. Um, we heard from Tomb Heads. Um, we heard the incredible story, organic story of his uh, tongue and cheek joke that turned into um, the pixel art and uh, the, the the avenues that he's like kind of loved and taken. Um, so thank you so much from uh, from Tomb Heads. Um, One Earth NFT, which was um, who was just speaking, uh, Narayan. Uh, she's uh, got a new project coming to AVAX um, that's going to release pretty soon. There's six collections that are launching throughout the year. Um, she's new to digital illustration, but as we can see, um, it looks like something something that's just been waiting for her for a long time. And then, of course, Footprint, Footprints on Mars and Jedediah, thanks for being here. Um, they, they work as a team uh, uh, backing Footprints uh, work, uh, which is uh, created with the conversation between computer and artist. Um, he uses generative forms to create um, some some legitimately mind-blowing artwork that comes from the realm of uh, a relationship between man and the computer. Um, so that is, uh, that's all our artists from, uh, for the week. Guys, is there any artists um, in it here as well that have maybe a question? Um, uh, a question, don't worry about this uh, Dirty Deeds, this will all go onto YouTube, so um, it's for our YouTube audience as well, so this will, this will be there that artists can use for their own promo material and whatever. Um, is there any questions from artist to artist that you wanted to qu answer, or um, are we pretty much wrapped up? Sick as... All right, guys. Well, thank you um, so much again for taking the time um, to be here this this morning for me. Um, like I said, I enjoy, it's one of my favorite times of the week. I enjoy this every week. I get so much. I learn so much. Um, and just uh, you guys taking the time to come here and, and, and be with be with us. It's it's uh, it's awesome. So thanks heaps. Thank you for having us, Floyd. My absolute thank, thank you. Cheers, Floyd. Thank you, man. All right, guys. No worries. Um, don't be a stranger Thank as well. You. Reach out. Reach out when there's uh when there's new projects coming on your on your behalf or there's new things you're you're doing and tapping into. Um, please don't be a stranger. Reach out. Let us know, and um, we'll get you back on to talk about it. All right, Freud. Thank you. Sweet ass, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Um, and I'll talk to you later. Uh, this has been Final Export Episode Eight. Thanks for listening. <laughs>